Hello, everyone. My name is Omar Awana. I'm a professor of radiology at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. I want to talk today about the RSV infections in children. RSV, very important public health topic that's getting a lot more attention in the media. So let's get right to it. So there have been rising respiratory infections in children lately, and there's been a dramatic increase of respiratory infections, and more and more children are being hospitalized for respiratory infections. And it's not COVID. It's not COVID. It's not the flu. Uh, the major culprit is actually the RSV virus, the resp respiratory syncytial virus. That's what's causing many of the respiratory infections that we're seeing now uh, currently. And this is actually a common illness. It's usually seen in the winter months like November, December, January, but it's obviously October and we're starting to see this a little bit earlier now. And there's many theories about why it is that we're seeing them earlier. It's partly due to the fact that, you know, in previous years, you know, everyone was masking up uh, and, you know, the virus wasn't being transmitted as much. But now because there are less masks, more and more kids are being predisposed to getting the virus earlier because mo this is a common virus. Most people by the age of two have been infected or exposed to this virus, you know, in in the community. So uh, this is very prevalent. And, you know, now, you know, with less and less masks, you know, more people are being exposed and thus we're seeing more cases now, you know, traditionally, you know, it happens in November, December, but now we're seeing it a little earlier. The symptoms for RSV are, uh, are variable. Usually in most kids, it's mild. Most kids, you know, get the illness and they recover in one to two weeks, in some cases, even four to seven days. Uh, children that are younger are more susceptible to getting this. And that's because they have decreased immune response and decreased immune mechanisms to fight off the infection. Again, most people and most kids will get this you know, by the age of two. And according to the CDC, every year about 58,000 kids will need to be hospitalized because of RSV, because of difficulty breathing, wheezing, and the need for supportive therapy at the hospital. And this virus, like many others, you know, spreads through respiratory droplets, uh, you know, through coughing, sneezing, and indirect contact with contaminated surfaces. You touch a contaminated surface, uh, you know, you cough, you bring your nose near that, you get infected with RSV. So, you know, in general, the signs and symptoms can be variable, but typically the, what we usually look for is, you know, is your child more irritable? Is there a change in feeding pattern, difficulty breathing and wheezing? And, you know, once they start to wheeze, that's an ominous sign. That's a sign that we don't want to see. So if you definitely, if your child is having difficulty breathing, you may consider seeing a doctor and going to the emergency room for that. This is typically diagnosed with a nasal swab. There's no major treatment for this. It's not like we give any specific medicines for RSV, but it's usually based on supportive therapy, giving fluids, and you know, in the case that they can't breathe, giving oxygen. You know, if it gets extremely severe, they may need to be intubated and they may need help breathing, but that would be a severe case of RSV. Now, there's obviously no vaccine to you know prevent RSV like there is for COVID or something like that. And really, you know, just basic uh hand sanitation, you know, washing your hands, you know, these are the best ways to protect ourselves from and protect our kids from getting the RSV infection. Now, I just kind of want to go over what the imaging findings will look like. This is a normal chest x-ray in a young child, right? You can see that, uh, you know, these bright areas are the bones. This is the clavicle here. This is the scapula. We're seeing the humerus right here. These are all the ribs that we're seeing here. This bright density here in the middle is a combination of the heart and the thymus, your thymus gland, right? Uh, this here midline, this dark area here is your trachea and the airway curving in. And this of course is the right lung. This dark area is the right lung. And this you know, dark area here on the left is the left lung. We don't see as much of the left lung because the heart is you know, obscuring part of that, right? So this is a normal X-ray. You notice that we see the right lung very well, right? It's nice and dark and it's dark because it's air. Air is darker on a chest x-ray, right? So, and here in the midline, we can see part of the spine. This is part of the thoracic spine, right? Um, that we're seeing along the midline. And notice we can see the borders of the heart very well. We can see the nice dark air in the right lung, the nice dark air along the periphery or the outer margin of the left lung, right? A normal, nice chest x-ray. Compare this to a patient that has tested positive for RSV. We can see, you know, the heart here and we can see that the lungs are a little hyperinflated. Notice we can see more of the right lung, more of the left lung than we could on the prior chest X-ray. And the main finding that we usually see in RSV are these 
you know, circular opacities kind of near the heart. We call this the hilum, right? This, this area around the heart more centrally, this is known as the hilum. We have these circular opacities because the airways have become thickened. And when, you know, there's, there's thickening of the airways and we call that peribronchial cuffing. Uh, when, you know, we have, you know, a circular density here because that represents that the airway is thickened. And that's what happens in the RSV because RSV typically infects the airways and the lungs. So that's typically what we see here where we have peribronchial cuffing and thickening of the airways kind of centrally near the hilum and near where the heart is. Uh, that's a characteristic finding of RSV on a chest x-ray. You know, as it progresses, you can get something called atelectasis, which is collapse of the lung. And in more severe cases, you can actually get pneumonia where you would get frank opacity and bright uh, density here in the lung that'll obscure the dark uh, areas that represent normal aerated lungs. So that would be in more severe cases of RSV, but you know, more commonly you get thickening of the airways centrally known as peribronchial cuffing. So that's in a nutshell, you know, what you should know about RSV and the rising cases of RSV in the, in the population. Thank you so much for your attention. Tune in next week for another important public health video.